Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We have some new information to tell you about tonight. Two felony charges against a former substitute teacher in Dilworth Glendon Felton Public Schools have been dropped. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. Andrea has the night off. Tara Nichols was accused of having sex with high school boys. Court documents say a mother of a student contacted investigators after being concerned a substitute teacher was sending her son nude pictures and also inappropriate messages. The school district said that upon learning of the investigation, Nichols was suspended and then resigned at the end of January. Clay County prosecutors cited a Minnesota court rule that allows them to drop a charge without the court's approval. Prosecutor Pam Harris tells Valley News Live the teen involved in this case was not a student under Nichols' supervision at the time of the alleged incident. So Harris did drop the charges. The Moorhead Police Department has identified these four men in connection to a home invasion that happened earlier this week. Take a, take a look now on your screen. These four men are facing numerous criminal charges. Police responded to the 1100 block of Bellsley Boulevard after an apartment tenant jumped from a third floor balcony to run. That was as three men were breaking down his front door. Another victim was allegedly attacked with a baseball bat and then robbed in the hallway. And the suspects hid in his apartment for hours as police investigated the crime. All four were arrested Tuesday by Dilworth police on an unrelated matter. The downtown Grand Forks Social Detox Center is open for business, and the director says it will not become a free hotel. The goal of the 10-bed facility is to provide a safe place for intoxicated people to stay, and those who are willing to receive detoxification services in a non-medical setting. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson gives us a tour. The nights are getting colder and possibly even deadly for some chronic alcoholics and drug users who often spend the night beneath bridges or sleeping in the bushes during the summer months, sleeping it off along the Greater Grand Forks Greenway. But now the Grand Forks Withdrawal Management Center, aka Social Detox Center, is open for business just across the street from the county office building. What is the criteria for folks to get in here? That you'd be alcoholic or have a drug problem? Or uh, we do accept both alcoholics and other drugs. The most thing is, since it's a non-medical detox, is they have to be medically cleared. Um, for services here. Clients walk into a secure entryway where they're screened to make sure they don't need immediate medical attention before they're let into the facility. Then they're given a simple place to sleep, the use of a shower, clothes, and sandwiches. Plus, clients will receive counseling services to try and get them started down a better path in life. Like I said, I don't want it to be the free hotel that people just go and start abusing the services, but it will be a definitely willing to save lives too when you look at being able to provide a safe place for people to spend the night and it should also make the job of police out on the streets a bit easier police now have a place to take highly intoxicated homeless people who have not committed any crime it's an additional resource for law enforcement um, it's an additional tool that we can use that enhances individual and public safety the Northlands Rescue Mission has a policy of not accepting folks who are intoxicated. However, they have worked with the police to make exceptions, especially during extreme cold. But now there's a new resource in place to keep everyone safe while putting them in touch with counseling. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Now, so far, only a couple people have used the new social detox center. However, the director expects usage to pick up this weekend as the word gets out as the temperatures begin to drop. The center is expected to operate on an annual budget of over $300,000, and it's funded by grants and money from the city, state, and Altru Hospital. Well, it's another cold and gray October day. Is there any chance for a warm-up? Let's check right in with Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson for a look at tonight's forecast. Hutch? I've heard from a few. Uh, never mind the warm-up, will we ever see the sun again? Well, I did hear from a young person named Annie, and I guess the sun is supposed to come out tomorrow. We have clouds in the eastern third of North Dakota spreading into Minnesota. Look at the warm-up taking place in the western Dakotas. We're pushing the 60s there. That is heading our way. But for tonight, we will see the cool weather. We will see the clouds continue. Can't roll out an isolated renegade sprinkle. Temperatures falling into the low 40s and eventually 30s. And then some less cold weather will be on our doorstep as we close out our work week. I'll have all the sunny details on that 
here in just a few moments. All right, thank you so much, you Hedge. Bet. Well, two men have been arrested by the Grand Forks Narcotics Task Force on meth charges. 33-year-old Kurt Knowles and 64-year-old Choi Osted both are facing a felony charge of possession of meth and intent to deliver within 1,000 feet of a school. The two were arrested after 11 grams of meth was found during a search of Oysted's home in Grand Forks. 21-year-old Larissa Galloway of Moorhead and 25-year-old Levi Melby of Fargo, well, they've been arrested on various drug charges after a traffic stop early this morning. Police say an officer stopped a car for having a burned-out headlight on I-94 near the Red River Bridge. That's when the officer detected signs of deception and possible drug use and called in a canine team to search the car. Police say they found two homemade fireworks, drug paraphernalia, 117 grams of meth, and nearly $1,700 in cash from the driver. The final presidential debate hitting the presidential candidates hard on the issues, among them guns. Because I support the Second Amendment doesn't mean that I want people who shouldn't have guns to be able to threaten you, kill you or members of your family. In Chicago, which has the toughest gun laws in the United States, probably you could say by far, they have more gun violence than any other city. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton have two very different views on guns in America. Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer looks into the issue and joins us live from Washington with more on what she found out. Sensible, common sense regulation. Christian Heine at the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence was happy to see the gun debate brought to the national stage. His mother was killed by gun violence. Now he spends his days working to get what he calls common sense gun reforms on the ballot. To have somebody like Hillary Clinton out there really fighting and saying the things that we've been saying for so long, that we know what the common sense measures are, we know how to fix this problem, and we know how to do so while respecting the Second Amendment. This election day, voters in several states will see initiatives like universal background checks on the ballot. Heine says a Trump presidency could backtrack the progress advocates have made. I think that it's pretty clear between the two candidates who who's fighting to really put an end to this epidemic and to save lives versus, you know, somebody who's really capitalizing on fear. While the coalition to stop gun violence has some strong views, they're not endorsing a candidate. While here at the National Rifle Association, they're standing behind Donald Trump, someone who they say believes in their values. Trump is a strong Second Amendment supporter. Trump will stand up for the Second Amendments. He will appoint justices who believe in that right. Amy Hunter with the National Rifle Association says a Clinton presidency could put the Second Amendment at stake. Hillary Clinton does not, she says she supports the Second Amendment because she's paying lip service to voters and she's she's lying about it. It's, it's typical with Hillary Clinton to say what she thinks will get her elected and then to have positions that don't back up that statement whatsoever. As the days until the election continue to wind down, the future of guns in America remains uncertain. But that could change drastically depending which one of these candidates makes it to the White House. Fall isn't normally the time of year we think about what for some is a great American pastime, garage sailing. But if you're looking to get in for one more round, we have a deal for you. The folks at Oak Grove are back with their annual sale. They're calling it a rummage sale. It's not in a garage, but instead in two gyms at the school's north side campus. The money they make will help pay for things like mission trips. Caitlin Bellium is headed to Guatemala and one next week. We're going to be helping orphanages and like um, building a playground for an orphanage and then we're going to uh, this like after school kind of program and like teaching them lessons and just kind of experiencing it. The sale runs until 8 tonight and tomorrow. They'll reopen at 730 tomorrow morning and on Saturday between 8 and 10 you can buy a box of who knows what for about five bucks. The sale brought in $25,000 last year. This year, they're hoping for 30. A pretty big shot in the arm for efforts to help the needy in our community. Spartan Nash, the parent company of the Family Fair grocery stores, is trying to make sure thousands of people won't be going hungry. They're donating more than $9,000 to the Great Plains Food Bank. Contrib contributions from many of you at the checkout in the FM area alone that will provide nearly 37,000 meals. Now statewide, the Spartan Nash campaign, which ran less than two weeks, raised enough money to provide more than 137,000 meals. The food distribution giant operates four family fair stores in Fargo, Moorhead, and West Fargo. Well, don't just decorate your home with leaves and pumpkins, but instead create some unique pieces of your own. 
A new trend this season, which is being seen in local and national stores, is copper. It's being showcased on furniture, pictures, and art. Unglued is creating some pieces with copper for their new classes, including wire baskets and tables. And there's just something that's really warm and cozy about it, and it adds a lot of elegance to even like rustic decor, decor to vintage decor to modern. It really works with any kind of um, way that you've done your house. Morgan says copper is a great change away from the common silver and gold and easy to incorporate from fall into winter. Still ahead tonight, Hyundai is recalling some sunroofs. That's because they could fall off while you're driving. So what model is affected? That's next on Valley News Live. And we were teased today with a little bit of morning sunshine, but the clouds have built back in. Warm weather is on the doorstep. We'll have details on what you can expect to close out the work week coming up right after this.